by the end of this module you should be able to understand various types of fibers understand the classification of fibers the most vital principle in forensic analysis is the well known locker principle of exchange it suggests that every contact leaves a trace when two or more physical entities come in touching with each other it shares some of their material with each other in forensic analysis fibers are very important things to consider in many cases where contact between two or more surfaces are suspected for example in cases of sexual assault the fibers from the perpetrator's clothes may be present on the victim's body or her clothing that may help in identifying a particular clothing type and finally help trace the criminal in this module we will discuss about several kinds of fibers commonly encountered by a forensic scientist now we will study the remaining module with the help of graphics and visuals source determination textile fibers can be exchanged between individuals between individuals and objects and between objects when fibers are associated with the specific source such as fabric from victim suspect or seen a value is placed on that association the probative weight of this value is dependent upon many factors the various subsections described those factors are fiber type and types found fiber color or colors number of fibers found fiber location or locations fiber types multiple fiber association nature of contact and fiber transfer and persistence whether a fiber is transferred and detected is also dependent on the nature and duration of the contact between the suspect the victim or both and the persistence of the fibers after they have been transferred first one is fiber type or types the rarity or commonness of the fiber types found at a crime scene or on a victim or suspect affects their probative value cotton fibers are by far the most commonly used plant fibers in textile production the type of cotton the fibers length and the degree of twist contribute to the diversity found in cotton fibers processing techniques such as mercization and color application also influence the value of cotton fiber identifications the presence of other less common plant fibers at a crime scene or on the clothing of a victim or suspect increases its significance the most common animal fiber used in textile production is wool originating from sheep the fineness or coarseness of woolen fibers often dictated the and use of wool the final woolen fibers are used in production of clothing whereas the coarser fibers are found in carpet the diameter and the degree of scale protrusion of the fibers are other important characteristics woolen fibers from animals may also be found including camel alpaca cashmere and mohair the identification of less common animal hairs 
fibers or both at a crime scene or on the clothing of a suspect or victim would have increased significance. Over half of all fibers used in the production of textile materials are manufactured. Some manufactured fibers originate from natural materials such as cotton or wood, whereas others originate from synthetic materials. All non-naturally occurring fibers are manufactured, but not all manufactured fibers are synthetic. Example, rayon. Certain types of manufactured fibers are more common than others. Polyester and nylon fibers are the most commonly encountered manufactured fibers, followed by rayons, acetates, and acryls. There are also many other less commonly manufactured fibers. The amount of production, the end use, the cross-sectional shape, microscopic characteristic and other traits of the fibers helps to influence the degree of rarity of a particular fiber type. Next is fiber color or colors. One of the greatest variations seen in textile is color. The color greatly influences the significance of a fiber comparison. Synthetic dyes and pigments belongs to 29 different chemical categories with more than a dozen different application methods. Even simple dyes might require between 8 and 10 processes to convert the raw materials into a finished dye. Given that the total annual production of any particular dye might not amount to more than 10 tons and that small processes batches are becoming the rule in the dyeing industry. Color becomes a powerful discriminant. Color is particularly significant when the garment of color spread out over the range of garments and carpenting produced in any one year and even more so when multiplied by number of garments and carpets produced in previous years. Individual fibers can be colored before being spun into yarn. Yarns can be dyed after being spun. Or the fabric can be dyed before or after its construction. Color can also be applied to the surface of a fabric by printing. The absorbance of the dye along the fiber length suggests the dyes and dyeing method used. Fading and discoloration may also add increased significance to a fiber association. Next is numbers of fibers. The number of fibers identified on the clothing of a victim associated to the clothing of a suspect is important in determining the actual contact. The greater the number of fibers, the more likely that the direct contact occurred between these individuals. The converse is not necessarily true. However, and even on one fiber association can have probative and scientific value. Additionally, finding no fibers does not de facto mean that no contact occurred. Each case is different and the examiner must weigh all the relevant factors before determining the significance of the evidence. Next is fiber location. Where the fibers are found also affects the probative value of a particular association. The location of fibers on different areas of the body or on specific items at the scene can influence the significance of the fiber association. 
Next is fabric type. Fabric construction affects the number and types of fibers that may be transferred. Tightly woven or night fibers shade fair fibers than loosely night or woven fabrics. Fabric composed of filament yarns shade less than fabric composed of spun yarns. Certain types of fiber also transfer more rapidly. The condition and wear of the fabric also affects the degree of fiber transfers. Newer fibers may have an abundance of loosely adhering fibers on the surface of the fabric, whereas worn fabrics may have damaged areas that easily shed fibers. Damage to a fabric caused during physical contact which greatly increases likelihood of fiber transfer. Next is multiple fiber associations. If many different fibers types are found associated among the suspect, victim and scene, then the likelihood that contact occurred between these items is greatly increased. Each associated fiber transfer is considered to be an independent event and multiple associations undermine an argument that the fibers were all deposited by coincidence. Next one is nature of contact. The type of physical contact between a suspect and a victim helps to determine the number of fibers transferred and the value placed on their discovery. Violent physical contact of an extended duration may result in many fiber transfers. Next is fiber transfer and persistence. Textile fibers are transferred to the surface of a fabric either by direct which is also known to be primary transfer or indirect which is known secondary transfer. The likelihood of transfer depends on the type of fabric involved in the contact and the nature and the duration of contact. Studies have shown that transferred fibers are lost at a geometric rate depending on the type of fabrics involved and on the movement of the clothing after contact. For example, the clothing of a homicide victim may retain transferred fibers for a longer time because the victim is not moving. Therefore, under these circumstances, it is difficult to predict precisely how many fibers might remain on the clothing of a living individual after a given period. But it is important for investigators to retrieve clothing immediately. Whenever a fiber is found in relation to a crime scene, victim or suspect, it has potential significance. Matching dyed fibers, whether manufactured or natural, can be very meaningful. Whereas the matching of a common fibers such as white cotton or blue denim cotton would be less significant. In some situation, however, the presence of white cotton or blue denim cotton possibly still has some meaning in resolving the truth of an issue. The discovery of cross transfers suspects to victims and vice versa dramatically increases the likelihood that two items came into contact and greatly reduces the likelihood of chances occurrence. When a fiber examiner associates a question fiber to a known textile item, there are ultimately two possible explanations. First is that the question fiber originated from the known textile or the question fiber did not originate from known textile. To say that the question fiber originated from the known textile, it either had to be the only fabric of its type ever produced or now existing or the transfer of fibers was directly observed. As neither of these situations is likely to occur, fiber examiner must conclude that because the question fibers exhibit the same results in all test properties as the fibers from the known sample, the question fibers are consistent with originating from the source textile. Other textile sources that incorporate the same fibers can be ruled out only by context and availability.
in order to say that a fiber did not originate from a particular textile is to know the history of the textile or have observed the fiber transfer from another textile. Next is fiber source. If a question fibers are associated with known fibers, the question fibers either originated from the known textile or from another fabric source, which not only is composed of fibers of exact type and color, but also form a fabric that had to be available to contribute those fibers through direct or indirect contact. The chances therefore remote to encounter fibers for environment of a victim that are identical to fibers from the suspect's environment in the absence of contact. Put another way, the chance of finding known fibers from a randomly selected suspect source that match the question fiber is not possible. Next is classification of fibers. Most basic and important classification of fibers is to divide them into two types based on its origin. These are natural fibers and man-made fibers. The natural fibers are also categorized into three main categories that is animal fibers, vegetable fibers and mineral fibers. These three categories are again divided into many subcategories. Let us discuss them with the help of given chart. Textile fibers, they are divided into natural and artificial. The natural one is further divided into animal, vegetable and mineral. Similarly, animal is again divided into three main categories, silk, wool and hair. Vegetable has three subcategories that is seed, blast, leaf. On the other hand, we have artificial. Artificial has three more categories, synthetic polymer, natural polymer and others. Synthetic polymer is further divided into seven subcategories, polyolefin, polyvinyl, polyurethane, polyamide, aramide, polyester and synthetic. Natural polymers are further divided into five categories, alanite, FTC, regenerated protein, regenerated cellulose, and cellulose ester. Now let us learn about the natural fibers. Natural fibers are prepared from plant, animal and mineral sources. Natural fibers can be categorized according to their origin. First one is vegetable fibers. The commonly used plant fibers are cotton, flax, heap, wild sisal, jute, bamboo and cotton are also extensively used. Now let us learn about some vegetable fibers and their characteristics. First one is cotton. Fibers appears like ribbon and twisted, forming convoluted flattened tubes. Second is coir. The adjoining of the ultimates mostly has wavy outline. The fibers comprises around stigma. Next is zoot. Lumen is prominent and random with constrictions, terminals of an taper to points. Next is flags, nodes like X, 
V's or Y's. Fibers appear as a bamboo. Now we will learn about the animal fibers and their characteristics. Next is silk. In longitudinal view, fibers are fine without any markings. Cemented in pairs by silk gum. In cross section, fibers are triangular with rounded corners in pair. Silk occurs as two filaments of proteins, fibronin, coated and cemented together by a second protein called scissorin, termed as silk gum. Next is wool. It is irregular diameter and prominent scale margin. Medulla present in some medium and coarse fibers. Medulla may be fragmental, interrupted or continuous. In cross section, oval to circular, variable in diameter. Medulla, if present, is constrict and variable in size. Next is artificial or man-made fibers. Synthetic fibers may be originated from natural polymers, which may be renewed fibers such as viscose, rayon, cellulose acetate, and triacetate, etc. Or manufactured from simple polymeric material, such as synthetic fibers, polyamides, polyesters, polyurethanes, etc. Let us learn about their characteristics. First is viscous rayon fiber. It is highly absorbent, burns with smell of burnt paper and leaves fine grey or black ash. Next is cellulose acetate. It melts and burns with smell of acetic acid, forms a black bead. Next is artificial fibers from natural polymers. Fibers can be renewed from two natural sources. First is biological source which is cellulose, viscose, model rayon. Second is rayon, cellulose esters, protein, etc. Next is mineral source, which is glass. Let us analyze them. First is collection of a representative sample. Second, preparation of the sample for analysis. Third, analysis using appropriate methods. Although these activities are not independent of each other, anyone can have a significant effect on another. Because error is possible at each step, the examiner must be able to identify these errors and avoid them. Any method of analysis had certain attributes such as accuracy, preciseness, specificity, sensitivity, dependability and practicality that must be considered when choosing the most appropriate method to adequately answer the question at hand. Ultimately, it is the examiner's responsibility to evaluate all the available information and decide the level of uncertainty that is acceptable with a given method on a given set of samples. Next is physical matches. A physical match occurs when two or more pieces of fabric or cordage are reconstructed to prove they were previously one continuous piece of fabric. This examination is conducted by describing and documenting any cut, torn or damaged edges on question items and their correction to like areas on known atoms. Photography is recommended method of documentation. Depending upon sample size, suitability and exhibited characteristics, it may not be possible to effect a positive physical match. Now the last is fiber examination. Fiber identification consists of determining the generic class of fiber. This analysis requires a sufficient number of examination to place the fiber in question into one and only one generic class. Fiber comparison consists of determining 
if a question fiber or fibers exhibit the same chemical, microscopic and optical property as fiber or fibers comprising part or all of known sample. A comparison requires an examiner to complete at least two of the analytical techniques listed for each of the following categories. The generic class, physical characteristics and color. The techniques selected should independently confirm the results obtained. It should be noted that some techniques allow greater discrimination than others between apparently similar samples. The results to be reported in a uniform and consistent manner. Format, units of measurements and accepted calculation should all be documented in the laboratory's manuals. The contributor of the evidence must be able to interpret the result and understand their significance. The International Organization for Standardization, that is ISO, recommends that reports be clear, accurate, and in proper presentation. Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. When two or more physical entities come in touching with each other, it shares some of their materials with each other. The natural fibers are also categorized into three main categories, namely animal fibers, vegetable fibers and mineral fibers. Natural fibers are prepared from plant, animal and mineral sources. Synthetic fibers may be originated from natural polymers, renewed fibers such as viscose, rayon, cellulose, acetate and triacetate etc. or manufactured from simple preliminary material, synthetic fibers such as polyamides, polyesters, polyurethanes etc.